prayers are powerful. Amen? In fact, you are a powerful people. You're a powerful people. We belong to a powerful people. You may not believe it. You may not see it. You may not be walking in it. You may be sitting here right now this morning thinking, I got nothing to give. I want to tell you who you are this morning. You are a powerful people. And uh, at the moment we're witnessing two candidates racing for what is considered to be one of the most powerful positions in the world. Me and Kate watched the debate on YouTube, a little bit of it last night. But I want to let you know that a Holy Spirit filled believer carries even greater power and authority than those elected to the halls of government. You are a powerful people. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if we could just take a hold of that this morning. If we could just recognize the power and authority that we have because we are the children of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Wonderful. We're going to turn to a scripture this morning. It's in 2 Peter. So if you've got your Bibles with you. And this is the part of the service where we like to give out some freebies. You can go woo if you want. Now then, does anyone not have a Bible? Ian, this is for you, my friend. Fantastic. I want to encourage you, Ian, every time that you come here on a Sunday morning, to bring that with you, okay? It's far easier than flicking on your phone, okay? So, and you can even highlight it and draw circles around words, and you can go for it. So we're looking for 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. And we're starting a new series this morning, which is probably going to take us all the way up till Christmas. It's called Power, everyone say power. power, to stand and to live on purpose, okay? Power to stand and power to live on purpose. And uh, this morning, uh, as a starter, I just want to read this scripture as, a, as almost an introduction, really, to the different things that we're going to be looking at. So it's 2 Peter chapter 1, and reading from verse 3. And this morning I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Okay, and we're going to read right from verse 3 through until verse 11. It says this. By his, everyone say his. His. Divine power. Can we say power? Power. God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Praise God. We could stop there. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. Isn't this a great scripture, man? I was reading this and I was like, this is, this is gold. These are the promises that enable you to share in his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Everyone still with me? Because we're going to keep going with this. In view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement or add to your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance. Isn't this a great scripture? And endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love for everyone. Verse 8. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, 
Work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's a good word, isn't it? Praise God. And the main truth I simply want to lay out for us this morning is this. And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, the word you put on my heart, Father, would just go out to soft hearts this morning. Lord, that it would bear fruit this morning. It wouldn't just be another message, Lord. But Father, I thank you. Your word, Lord, is powerful and effective. I thank you when your word goes out, Lord. It, it does not return to you void, Lord. And so this morning, for those that are watching online, and Father, for those in this room right now, Lord, I pray this word, Lord, would bear fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The main truth I want to lay out for us today is this. God has given us, his people, everything we need to live out a godly life. Amen. He's given us everything we need to live out a godly life. He's given us everything we need that we might stand. He's given us everything that we might need to be those who live within the purposes that God has for us. Everything I need to be fruitful and a sharp instrument in the kingdom of God. Everything I need to walk this life in his peace and to live content in all circumstances. He has given me everything Amen. I need to live out this godly life. Among men, a few other things, there are two things that hold me back from walking in the purposes that God has for me. One of them is sin and the other one is the lies from the enemy. Right. Those are the two things that stop us from work, walking in the there are a few other things as well, but those are the two things that stop us from walking in the fullness of what God has for me. Yeah. He's given me everything I need to walk out this plan that he has for me. Amen. The scripture does not say he will give me everything in the future. It doesn't say that he might give it to Jez depending upon his performance. It says that he has given me everything that I need to live a godly life. Now, little story. When Kate was pregnant with Josh, it was our first child, and uh, we were so prepared for his birth. Oh my word, we were so prepared. We had everything that we could possibly need. We had the, the, the hospital bag by the front door about three weeks before she was due to give birth. Uh, we had uh, a birthing ball. If you don't know what that is, I don't know, don't worry about it. <laughs> I didn't really understand what that was for. We had this CD with, with meditation music on, about six hours worth of meditation music on, which I quite liked actually, I liked that. <laughs> We had these energy drinks. We had about 10 energy drinks all ready to go. I even, Kate even made me download this app on the phone that timed contractions so that I could tell her exactly to the millisecond, you know, what the time was between the contractions. I'm telling you now, guys, like we literally had it all ready to go. We were all set and ready to go. And the due date came and nothing happened. And then the, the next day came and, and nothing happened. And then the third day, I think it was the third day, uh, we were sitting there, I think we were watching Prison Break at the time, watching Netflix. And literally we heard a pop, I'm not even joking, we heard a pop, and Kate's waters broke. And it was like, you ever seen those like submarine films where they bang the, 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 the like, battle stations, you know? And it was like, have you got everything? Yes, I've got everything. Have you got my bag? Yes, I've got your bag. Have you got this? Yes, 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 yes. 
And uh, I could, the funny thing about that was I, I literally could not get the ball through the front door, <laughs> which we hadn't anticipated that this big ball was not able to get through the front door. So it was all a bit stressful and everything. Anyway, we got in the car, we had to go down to Lantrusant Hospital, I think it is, it was like half an hour away. Uh, she kept making me stop every single time she had a contraction. It was, it was crazy, but it was exciting. We got there, the wonderful miracle of it was, was the first person that we met was a Christian lady that we knew from years and years and years ago, who suddenly made us all feel like, oh, it's all gonna be okay, it's all gonna be okay, it's all gonna be And the, the lady said, well, listen, you're a little bit early, you know, you're a little bit early. Um, you know, you have to go back home for at least a good few hours. Uh, so we were like, okay. And the, the nurse, she said to us, she said, so the one thing is just just keep an eye on her temperature and uh, just keep us posted on how it's going. Okay, so we're like, no problem. We'll get back in the car. We look at each other. Have you got a thermometer? <laughs> No, have you got a thermometer? <laughs> Didn't have a flipping thermometer. And the one thing the lady had asked us for was to keep, it, keep an eye on her temperature. We had all this stuff. And so what happened is about one o'clock in the morning by this time, we're coming home, we're getting to that ASDA down on the A470. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm gonna go and get a thermometer now. I ran into the store. I was like, my wife's having a baby. I need a thermometer right now. Uh, we got the, yeah, we got some moments where it all worked out, but it was hilarious because we were so prepared, we had everything we could possibly need, but the one thing that we did need, we didn't have. Now listen guys, sometimes we go through situations where we think we don't have everything we need, and the enemy will lie to you and say you haven't got what it takes. Yeah. You're not going to make it. But God promised to you this morning, and today, and tomorrow, and next week is, I have given you everything you need for walking out this godly life. Yeah. He's got you covered, man. Yeah. God has got you covered. Yes, it's not a surprise, the situation that you're going through right now. That's right. That's right. It wasn't a surprise to God what you went through when you were a child. Yeah, that's right. It's not a surprise to God what's going to hit you tomorrow. Right. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He knows everything about you. Yeah. And he knows what's going to happen. Yeah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has got you covered. And he is not a man that he should lie. So when he says to you, I've given you everything that you need to walk out this godly life, what he means is, I've given you everything you need to walk out this godly life. Sometimes in life you can think, oh, this came by surprise, didn't it, God? I bet you ain't got me covered in this situation. And God says to you again, I've given you everything you need to walk out this godly life. Amen. Now, a few months ago, a whole bunch of us lads went on the Three Peaks National, uh, well, the National Three Peaks. Big shout out for the boys. Yes, thank you. I'm trying to milk it a bit, you know. Now, Caleb, uh, Caleb, our wonderful leader who's not here this morning, shout out to Caleb. He gave us a list of everything that we could possibly need to take with us in our backpacks. And I'm telling you now, guys, the list that he gave us was about 25 pages long, man. It, it, the way I can explain it is by saying this. If there was a zombie apocalypse, <laughs> um, like, I'm telling you now, if, like, you know, something like that happened, we were covered, man. We had it all. If Gaz broke his leg on the mountain, we had it covered in that bag. I was ready. I was ready, man. If we had to stay on top of the mountain for six months, <laughs> Stuart was prepared for that, right? He, he had us covered, man. He had enough food in his bag to, to look after us all for a good six months. God has got you covered. Yeah, yeah that's right. He's got you covered. Amen. And he's given you everything that you need to walk out this godly life. Amen. Whatever you face in life, it's not a surprise to God. Disappointment, he says, I've got the power you need to live a godly life through this. Because he's the restorer. Yeah. It's not that this, the disappointment will be a quick, fee, uh, quick fix and it'll just vanish, but he'll give you the strength to walk through it. Yeah. That's right. A broken past, he says, 
I got the power you need to let the past go. Because I am the healer. He has the power to not allow your childhood to have a negative effect on you living a godly life today. Whatever you went through as a child, it wasn't a surprise to God. That doesn't mean to say it was from God. Because God is good. And he hates, he hates to see children suffer. And does it hurt sometimes? Yes, it can hurt. And are all the questions answered? No, they're not always answered. And sometimes it may require you to lay it down before him every single day. But he has already given you today the power to overcome and he has made you a new creation, which means that your past will not dictate your future. He has given you everything that you need to live this godly life. Two things that stop us from walking in the fullness that God has for us, amongst other things, sin, and also the lies of the enemy. A chronic sickness. He says, I've got the power you need to not give up because I am the endurance giver. I read a few verses a few months ago in the the Psalms, I think it was. I can't remember what the scriptures were, but it was beautiful because it basically said, (laughs) words to the effect of, now have endurance. And then the next verse was, and I am the endurance giver. (laughs) It says, be strong, and I am the strength giver. You know? It's a beautiful thing. Struggling with sin in your life? If the gospel speaks about anything, it talks about the fact that God has got the power to free you from sin. That's what he did on the cross. Broke the chains from sin and death. If you're struggling with an area of your life of sin, God wants to tell you this morning, he loves you, he's for you. But at the same time, he says, I've, got the, I've done it. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. And you can be free. Yes. Because there is power in my name. Amen. The enemy will say to you, you can't be free. The enemy will say to you, gentlemen, you cannot live a holy life. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you now, why would God say, I've given you everything you need in order for you to live a godly life? Yeah. Yeah. Because he doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. Well, it all sounds wonderful, doesn't it? <laughs> it all sounds wonderful. But let's have a think as to how this actually happens. Well, if we go back to that scripture, how does this actually happen, yeah? You love it when preachers talk a beautiful message, but they don't actually apply it. <laughs> well, the scripture tells us, there's two things that the scripture says that we just read there. If we just flick back, if you've got it open. It says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by what? (coughs) By coming to know him. It's the first thing, knowing him. Okay. And then verse four, it says this. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. Promises. These are the promises that enable you to share in his divine nature. So two things the scriptures give us here. Firstly, the key is knowing him. And right at the beginning of this series of teaching where we're going to talk about so many different things, it's all about knowing him. And secondly, it's about his promises. It's all about his promises. Just give me one moment. Have a little think about that while I just find where I am in here. <laughs> Knowing him. Mm-hmm. Not just hearing about him. Yeah, good. Not just singing about him on a Sunday morning. I mean, like, I know Taylor Swift, right? And she's lovely. <laughs> I, well, I think she's lovely. But, you know, <laughs> <I> know, she's... <laughs> Okay, let me rephrase that. We'll delete that one. 
I know that Liz has got a daughter who knows Taylor Swift, okay? <laughs> that sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Anna absolutely loves Taylor Swift. You still gotta give that testimony of how she got tickets to go to see it. She knows Taylor Swift, she knows everything about Taylor Swift, she knows like, you know, she just knows everything about, but does Anna really know Taylor Swift? I don't, has she spent time with, has she, I don't know, has she spent a couple of hours? <laughs> okay, this is, we're gonna just delete this whole illustration. Um, so, yeah, you can know about somebody, but do you know them? Yeah. Do you know them? And when we're talking about God, the question is, guys, have you experienced and have you seen his faithfulness in your life? If you have, say amen. 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 So I'm not just singing that he's good. I'm not just singing that he's good. Right. But I know in my heart that he is good. Yes, he is. Yeah. When you don't simply know his acts, but you understand his ways, when you've spent time with him, when you've spent time with him, when you know him, yeah. when you know him, when you know him, you don't say things like, oh, I'm sick of this, when's he gonna give me a break? When you know him, when you know him, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter what you're going through, your heart is singing, God, you are good yeah, right. all the time. Yeah, when you know Jesus, yeah. I hear some Christians talk and I think to myself, do you really know him? Do you know him? When you know him, he'll carry you through the valleys of your life, man. Right. When you know him, when you know him, Rob said it this morning, he said, you're good to me. Yes. I don't care what anyone else thinks, God. I don't care what my, my husband thinks, I don't care what my parents think. I can be all by myself and I can know, God, you're good to me. Yes. You are good to me. That's what's gonna carry you through. Yes. That's what's gonna help you live a godly life. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life as a result of, because of, beginning with, starting with, knowing him. Nice. And secondly, his promises. His promises. I feel so bad with my son when I say, I promise you we're going to do this. And then he comes up to me, have you ever had this? It's the most heartbreaking, horrible thing in the world. And he says, you promised me. And I think, oh, no, I promised you. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I promised you. I'm sorry. God does not break his promises. If he says he's going to be with you today and he's never going to leave you, he will never leave you. If he says he's given you everything you need for a godly life, he has given you everything you need for a godly life. The Bible is full of promises. At home, when I'm reading the word, I've got a little journal. And, and you know, I'm reading the Old Testament and I'm reading the book of Leviticus, and I'm reading it, I'm thinking, this is crazy. I don't understand what's going on. There's blood being splattered everywhere. There's stuff in here that's so confusing. It's talking about mold on the walls. It's talking about skin infections. It's talking about... And then I read one little verse, and it says something like, and you will be holy like I am holy. Yeah. And I get my journal out, and I just write down, I will be holy like he is holy. Yeah. You read the scriptures. Don't worry if you don't understand it all. I don't understand it all. But the Holy Spirit will shine out one yeah, little verse. Yeah, so and it'll be a promise that you can stand on. Because when you've got a promise, you can hold on to it. Yeah. And no matter what storm comes, I'm going to hold on to the promise. Yeah. And no matter what someone else tells me, I'm going to hold on to the promise. Amen. Know his promises. Write down his promises. Speak his promises. Talk about his promises. Yeah. Memorize his promises. Yeah. Why is it that we teach the kids out there memory verses? When you come into the adult room and people can't even quote one scripture at you. Memorize his promises, write them, you know. I was about to say tattoo them on your chest, but maybe we won't go there with that one. It 
it says, did you read what that scripture just said? It says, through his promises, listen to this, you can participate in his divine nature. You can participate in his divine nature. I don't fully understand what that means, but I know this. I don't need to live my life in the dust of the gossip of the world. I don't need to live my life in the dust of the complaining of the world. I don't need to live my life with the same viewpoint as my non-Christian colleagues. I don't have any non-Christian colleagues, actually. (laughs) uh, I don't need to live my life in the dust of the mess of... Because if I hold on to his promises, I can partake of his divine nature. It means that I can experience his power. I can have his wisdom. I can have his strength. I can have his viewpoint. It's all available to us as we give ourselves to knowing him and knowing his promises. Now, a few years ago, I decided that I needed to sort my uh, body out. And so I signed up for uh, six weeks personal training. Now, if anyone in the room wants to do that, I'm sure the church will pay for that, if you want to do that, okay? Uh, six weeks personal trainer with this bloke called Richard Reese, okay? Who some of you may have met before or heard about in Kefili. He owns a gym in Kefili. Now, he gave me everything that I needed to be the next Kefili bodybuilder, okay? <laughs> I'm t- he gave me everything. Like I'd never really set foot in a gym. This is honest truth. I'd never set foot in a gym really before. He showed me how to use the machines. He showed me uh, how to do different reps on the machines and stuff. He, he laid out a diet plan for me. He gave me everything I needed to sort myself out. Everything I needed. But even though he had given me everything I needed, do you think there was stuff I had to do as well? (laughs) Or do you think he he gave me everything I needed and then I just sat there and bing, suddenly I was looking, wouldn't that be wonderful? (laughs) Surely someone's gonna create a tablet one day you can take that will just go, I don't know. He gave me everything I needed but there was a response from me. There was an action from me. There was something that I needed to do. Wake up, guys. This is important, okay? I had work to do. I had to take myself to the gym and train. I had to eat the food that he told me to eat. Even though he had given me everything I needed, I had to change my life habits if I was to get strong. Even though he had given me everything I needed, I had to change my life habits in order that I would get strong. Amen. He's given you everything you need, Amen. but there's a response. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a responsibility. There is a call. Let's look back at that scripture one more time. It says this. In view of all this, Because of all this, because he's given me everything that I need, and it's all to do with knowing him, and it's all to do with holding on to his promises, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Make every effort to respond to God's promises. I I, I wasn't sure whether to share this illustration, but it works for me, okay? It's like, I love cooking, right? Yeah? I love chicken. Gaz loves chicken, yeah? Chicken is good, right? I love cooking chicken. I've got an air fryer. I love cooking the chicken, right? But if you don't add the spice to the chicken, if you don't add the salt to the chicken, what's the chicken going to be like? It's bland, man. It's boring. Doesn't taste much. The chicken is good. Is this illustration working? Yeah. You got to. I cooked chicken for, for Alan the other day. He was like, this is incredible. I was like, all it is is a bit of salt and paprika, man. 
But you meet Christians and they look like blinking boiled chicken. It's because they haven't, that's a great quote, isn't it? That's a tweet, Jez said. Supplement your faith, add to your faith, add the salt, add the paprika. Wendy does good food, man. But if she just gave me like, just standard chicken and rice, it would just be, but she adds the spice, man. The trailer is a better illustration. <laughs> he gave me everything I needed, but there was something I needed to do. The scripture's better. Let's go back to this. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement, add to your faith. With a, this is why it got me thinking about herbs and spice. It said, with a generous provision, not just a little tiny bit of salt. Talk to Loretta about a Jollof Rice Man. I'm telling you, she's not here today, but a little bit of salt ain't going to do it. Pour that salt on. A generous provision of moral excellence. He's given you everything you need, but you've got to add on to it something. Moral excellence. Living a life worthy of the calling that you have received. I was talking with Kerry Jones a long time ago about I've struggled with this area of my life. Do you know all he said to me? He said, you don't need that in your life. And that was all he said. I was expecting some incredibly spiritual answer. He said, you don't need that in your life. Be a man, be a woman of moral excellence. And when you slip up and make a mistake, get back up and say, I am a man or a woman of moral excellence. Amen. Amen. What else does it say? Knowledge. Get to know the word of God. I remember listening to a preacher one day and they said, I get so tired of people coming up to me saying, can you explain the scriptures? Why can't they get into the scriptures themselves? Why can't they learn from the scriptures themselves? Have a desire and a hunger to learn for yourself, to gain knowledge for yourself. Moral excellence, knowledge, knowledge. Oh, and this is the big one, guys. Self-control. Yes, Self-control. Right. He hasn't given me a spirit of fear. That's right. That's right. Can you say that this morning? Yeah. Say it with me. He has not given me a spirit of fear. But of love, power, and self-control. Are we clear on that? The enemy will say, you got a spirit of fear. I have not got a spirit of fear. I've got a spirit of love, thank you Rob, power, and self-control. 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 That's on me. He's given me everything I need. Yeah. And now he's saying to me, supplement your faith, add yeah. to your faith. Yeah. That's right. The trainer gave me everything I needed. Yeah. Yeah. I needed to do some work. Sorry. The chicken is great, but if you add something more to it, it becomes alive. Self-control, okay? Self-control, patient endurance. Anyone waiting for something? Yeah. Anyone struggling with something for a long time? I've given you everything you need for a life of godliness. It's all through knowing me. It's all through holding on to my promises. Now add to your faith. Add to your faith. Moral excellence. Add to your faith. Self-control. And add to your faith. Endurance. Have you seen how many times in the New Testament it talks about endurance? Yeah. <laughs> endurance. Patient endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection. And it finishes off with this, and love for everyone. Amen. Love for everyone. Like we've said so many times, God will do everything he can to help you. He has done everything he can for you to live a godly life. He will not lead you into temptation beyond that which you can bear. He's given you everything you need. But these are the things we need to supplement to our faith. These are the things we need to add. To. These, this is on me. Am I going to be a man of moral excellence? Because, because Jesus has defeated sin and defeated death, I now have a choice as to whether I sin. I now have a choice as to whether I sin. 
self-control, self-discipline. These are things that I can apply into my life. Not letting my emotions rule my life, but being led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And being someone who lives with love for everybody. Praise God. Okay, stay with me, guys, just one sec. Okay. God's intention for you is to stand. That's right. yeah. To stand in the storm. If you're in a waiting room season, it's to stand in the waiting room. I mean, we don't like standing in waiting rooms, but his intention for you is to stand in the waiting room. Yeah. You know the word stand, if you look at the end of Ephesians and it talks about the armor of God and it says, so in all of this, be someone who stands, learn how to stand. It's translated and it basically means to continue, to endure, to persist. Yeah. If I'm going to be a man who stands, it means I won't give up. It means I'm going to continue. It means I'm going to hold fast. It means I'm going to persist. It means I'm going to hold position. I was looking at that clip from Braveheart on YouTube where they're, they're racing towards him. And you've got Mel Gibson there and he's like, hold, hold. And it wasn't until the very last minute that they took out the enemy. It was an awesome film. <laughs> hold fast right. hold position yeah. it means I'm going to keep the faith it means no matter what I'm going through I'm going to keep my confession good yeah. it means I'm going to continue to read his word yeah. it means I'm going to continue to walk in his ways right. and know today that our heavenly father is the one who <laughs> gives us the power the strength, the endurance, the resilience the faith to stand because he is faithful and he is strong Amen. He puts walls of protection around his children. Yes. He will command his angels concerning you. Yes. He will protect you. He will deliver you. He will free you. He will cover you. He is our great fortress. Yes. He is our strength giver. And some of you guys don't know this because you don't read the word. He is the endurance giver. He will uphold you. Read through the Psalms. Read through the Psalms and write them down. Write them down. Write them down. So when you come across a, a, even a tragedy or a storm in your life, you don't have to suddenly start searching through the scriptures to find a word, but you've built this armor around you. Which means the devil's lies can't get in. Because you've built up this bank of his promises around you and around your wife and around your home. That when a lie comes, you just kick it in the dust. Yeah. And you stand. Because you know he's the promise giver. You know he's faithful to his word. You know he's going to provide for you. You know he's going to heal you. Because he's done it in the past and he's going to do it again. Because you know him. In the trial, he'll give me the power to stand. In the storm, he'll give me the power to stand. In the season of waiting, he'll give me the power to stand. In the disappointment, he'll give me the power to stand. In the persecution, he'll give me the power to stand. In the confusion, he'll give me the power to stand. When the accuser comes, he'll give me the power to stand. And in a world of chaos and shaking and fear and sickness and lies, God is calling his people to stand. We were not called to cower away. We were not called to retreat. We were not called to run for the hills but we're called to stand. Yes. His promises this morning, I'll give you the power, I've given you the power to stand. But make sure you add to that. Self-control. Make sure you add to that the things that we spoke about earlier. And the other thing, just to finish off, is God has got a plan and a purpose for your life. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. We've said it many times before, but just check that the person next to you's got a pulse, because if you've got a pulse, you have a purpose. God had a plan for you before you were born, that you might serve his purposes in your generation. This is the thing about the plan that God has for your life, the purpose that God has for your life. I hear so many people coming to me saying, what's God's plan for my life? What's God's plan for my life? The key is to get on board with his purposes for his world. Yes. That's enough to keep you going. That's enough to see you through. That's enough for you to work on. It's to be a man or a woman that says, like David, I just want to serve the purposes of God in my generation. Yes. 
I want to play my part in what God is already doing. I want to do my bit in what his purpose is in the world. What is that purpose? It's to grow in your relationship with him. Yeah. If you're sitting here this morning thinking, what's God's plan for my life? I'm going to tell you now a few things. Grow in your relationship with him. That'll keep you going until you're 110 years old. <laughs> to become more like him. Amen. To reflect Christ every day. Right. To proclaim his kingdom. To be Jesus on your street or in your office. To see the lost saved. To make disciples and to be a witness. Amen. Don't get too concerned with your career. Your career is wonderful and really amazing. And don't get too concerned with making lots of money in your bank account. That's wonderful and God wants to bless you. But give yourself to the purposes of God. Amen. I'm often thinking to myself... There's scriptures that talk about hay and gold. And that one day a fire is going to come. You told me to speak about fire this morning, didn't you? You did this morning. Was it you? It was you. Alan said, speak about fire. Well, here it is. It's just come to me. Scriptures that talk about hay and gold. And one day a fire is going to come. And all the stuff that is not of God, all the stuff that really doesn't matter, it's like hay. It's just going to burn up. I was thinking about our Sunday morning gatherings and I was thinking, as much as I love this and as much as I'm so happy about our second TV. <laughs> you know, and, and, and one day we're going to have a building. Yes. Amen. Oh, praise Amen. God. You know, I love, I love all, you know, praise God. You know, I, love, I love our YouTube channel, I love it all, you know, but the real gold yeah. is seeing people make decisions for Christ. Amen. Amen. Ultimately, that's where it's at. Yeah. And is this heart, is this heart totally surrendered to him? Yeah. Yeah. Because when I stand before him, that's really, really what is going to matter. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else, everything else is going to disappear. Yeah. But that which is built for him and by him, that is what is going to last. Amen. When you have a purpose, when you wake up with a purpose... There's no time for overthinking. <laughs> there is definitely no time for gossiping. Yeah. There's no time to take offense. That's right. If you want to take offense, trust me, just open your front door in the morning. <laughs> take one step out and guaranteed you'll have about 55 things to take offense to. You know, straight away. But when you step outside your front door, and you have a purpose. Yes. Your eyes are set on the purpose. That's right. I ain't bothered about gossiping and offence and and overthinking about. I mean, trust me, I struggle with this stuff, right? Yeah, I'm being real with you. Yeah, I, I overthink like more than more than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> but when I wake up in the morning and I say, God, I want to give myself to your purposes yes, today. I'm stepping outside the front door and I'm thinking, now who's he going to bring along my path? Yeah. He's given me everything I need to live on purpose. That means that when you understand that, you're going to be walking down the street, and it's not just an accident that that your neighbour Drusilla is walking past, <laughs> and you think to yourself, "Oh, she's looking a bit upset today." Yeah. When you're living on purpose, you're like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, I've got a purpose. Yeah. God's laid it out for me. I'm ready." Just a couple more things that we've done. Thanks. Great, For those that feel that they're not good enough, all he needs is your availability, yeah. not your ability. He just needs you to say, I'm available yeah. to serve your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. For those who feel that they've got nothing left to give, I want to remind you, you're more powerful than you know. Maybe the only thing you can do is at home say a prayer for me. Maybe all you can do is put a smile on your face when you're picking up your kids from school. I want to tell you, if you feel like you've got nothing to give, because the Holy Spirit lives in you, he will use you more than you even realize. Simply by having a humble heart and saying, God use me today. 
This is why I love Mark so much. Because, sorry to embarrass you, mate. Every day he drives to work and he just says, God, I just want to be a light for you today. It's the simplest of prayers, man. But God's going to use you even more powerfully than he already is. Not, you know, love you to bits, but there's nothing special about Mark. <laughs> All he says is, God, use me today to be a light wherever I end up. Yes. Simples. And for those who feel that they've missed it, for those that feel I've made too many past mistakes, for those that feel I'm no longer walking in what I walked in, I want to tell you this morning, your story is not over. Maybe the best bit of your story is just about to begin. When it comes to standing, and when it comes to walking out his purposes for your life, there is only a couple of things and a few others that will hold you back. One is the lies of the enemy, and one is sin in your life. Let's get rid of sin in our life. It's so easily entangled. Shake it off, shake it off. Move on. And definitely, let's, ignore, let's surround ourselves with the promises of God yeah. so much yeah. that it's the only thing that we see, it's the only thing we think about, it's the only thing on our lips all the time. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about power. Rob's going to be speaking to us on how there is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Annie's going to be speaking to us on the power of confession. Yeah. There's power in forgiveness. There's power in agreement. There is power when we come to the table. There is power in his word. There is power in the Holy Spirit. So much available to us. Don't let the lies of the enemy hold you back from what he's got for you this week. I'm just going to pray. And I'm really excited about the ministry that's going to be coming. But just know that God's given you everything this week to stand and to live on purpose. Should we just stand together? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And maybe you're facing a situation right now and you're thinking, I'm hearing lies from the enemy that I'm going to crumble, that I'm going to fall. God says, I'm giving you everything you need. Just raise your hand right now. We're going to pray that you'll stand. Maybe you're struggling with self-control in your life. God wants to say to you today, I've given you everything you need. This week, you're going to live a life of self-control. Maybe you're just hungry to be used by him afresh. Maybe you're just hungry to to serve his purposes in your generation. Maybe this morning you just recognize that all this other stuff really doesn't matter. I just want to serve you, God, however it is. Just raise your hand. And Father, right now, I pray for my good friends. I pray for my brothers and my sisters. And I declare freedom, Lord. Father, I speak your favor over us again. I speak your promises over us again. Thank you that you love us and you're for us. Father, for anyone that's struggling with sickness this morning in their body, Lord, we're speaking of healing right now in the name of Jesus. For anyone that's struggling in their mind this morning, Father God, we're speaking in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you that you've given us everything we need. Everything we need this week. So when the lies come of the enemy that say, you ain't got it all, you're going you're gonna to fail, you're going to crumble. We just silence those lies now in the name of Jesus. We silence them now in the name of Jesus. And we declare your truth, Lord, which is we have the Holy Spirit. We have your word. We have your people around us, Lord. We have elders that oversee our lives. God, we thank you for all the different things you've given us, Lord. Father, we pray for this word today that it would take root, Lord, and grow great fruit for your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Remember, guys, if you want anyone to chat with you or pray with you this morning, please don't leave before going because we want to pray for you if there's anything you want to pray for. But I think that that's it. That's it. So,